Just keep looking at me. Good, I like that. So I've arrived at Bethlehem, the Museum of the Mind. And actually, I've never been here before because it's quite out of the way in Beckenham. But they've had an extraordinary transformation over the last 12 months, moving to this beautiful new building and bringing the collections together in a completely new way. So I'm really looking forward to exploring. The museum forms part of the Bethlehem Royal Hospital, an institution that's been around for almost 800 years. Known as Bedlam, it gained infamy throughout the Middle Ages. But in 2016, the hospital provides sound mental health care, a mission supported by the museum's focus. I'm here to meet Xavier White, an artist whose work is on show in the museum. Following a life-changing cycling accident at the age of 18, Xavier became a patient at Bethlehem's sister hospital, Maudsley, for an extended spell. I asked him to show me around the gallery. You came to the Maudsley first because of a, a head injury. Yeah, in a yeah, I had, I, had, I had a head injury, 10 days in a coma. Didn't know whether I'd live or die, if I lived, what sort of, how I'd be. So, is it a utopian city? Yeah, for me it's a utopian city, but it was originally set out as a mind map for me to deepen my studies with various different frameworks. Right. Yeah. So there's a very different kind of work in here, um, by yeah. an artist called Elise Paquette, is that yes, right? Yes, that's right. It's more dystopia. Yeah. A personal yeah. dystopia. This is a realised timetable for her, yeah. with her fear of foods and eating. Everything's in, sort of impossible about it, isn't it? The, yeah. You couldn't eat from the bowls. Yeah, no. The if table you pour can't milk take the weight. They yeah. just sog. For a family, the dining table is where you all meet. So if yeah. that's impossible for her, you don't. You miss out on a lot yeah. of interaction with your family. Yeah. Incredibly powerful. Yeah. It's not just artistic works that are on show at Bethlehem. Many of the display cases have nods to the institution's notorious history. But given the sensitivities around the collection, they're displayed in a curious way. We're in a section of the museum called Freedom and Constraint, and I can see that you don't shy away from some of the really difficult parts of the treatment of mental illness down the centuries. But you've made some quite careful curatorial choices. Sure. Uh, so when we were developing our displays, and we had um, uh, shackles and uh, leg irons and all the rest of it mm. uh, in our collections, and thinking carefully about how we wanted to display those, mm. Um, we had decisions to make. Of course, we could have decided just to keep them in our, in our store and so no one could see them and be disturbed or frightened or whatever. But we felt that we had a duty to show them in some way. Equally, we didn't want to display them in a gothic way, a way in which I guess would be voyeuristic, mm. sort of lowest common denominator, bring the crowds in and see the awful change. Yeah, the things that we used to do that, you know. So, yes, they are challenging objects uh, to know quite how to display. And we feel, rightly or wrongly, we've done it in a way which allows people to opt in to the experience yeah. of seeing everything, but also opt out of them if they just find at the moment it's, it's too much yeah. for them. Up until last year, the Museum of the Mind was little more than a broom closet annexed to Bethlehem Hospital. As it now assumes national status, it must grapple with questions about how it presents the work in its collection. So, Caroline, you've undergone the most extraordinary transformation here over the last 12 months. Tell me about what's happened. It really has been a transformative experience. The museum has been on the site since 1970, mm -hmm. but in very different premises to these. 
So we feel that this is now a much more fitting home for the collections, both the art collection and the archives. And um, we have a collection at the Whitworth which um, shares some similar artists to those that you have on display here. And it used to be called an outsider art yes. collection. Um, and for us, it's part of the mainstream collection. Um, tell me about your feelings around that sort of terminology. Outsider art is not really a term that we would use to describe our collection. I think some people do find it helpful. It's a little bit like the nature of a diagnosis, perhaps, mm -hmm. that some people find receiving a psychiatric diagnosis helpful mm -hmm. because it provides them with an explanation mm -hmm. and it perhaps provides them to access to services. Others feel it's a label mm -hmm. and an unhelpful one. So I think it can work both ways. This year's Museum of the Year Award is a real David and Goliath story. 